Another newly noted podcast comes to you from the Coach's Podcast Room at Spurrier's Gridiron Grill in Celebration Point. Hey there, welcome into another duly noted podcast presented by our great friends at Titan MRI and brought to you from our great friends at Meldon Law from the Meldon Law Gator Studios. Uh, we're taping this show a little bit early, so yes, I am wearing the same shirt I wore on Monday. Uh, we're taping it uh, so I can be free to do the golf tournament this weekend. Uh, we can't wait to have it. Uh, and so because we can't really do a whole lot of um, – you know, current events, because we're doing it on Monday, uh, we're just going to do an SEC preview, uh, just talking, we'll have Robbie Andrew talk a little bit about it, it'll be a little bit of a short show, uh, because we're just trying to give you something, give our sponsors, make sure our sponsors are recognized, but give you guys something out there who love the show, and we appreciate you so much, I mean, the numbers continue to be awesome, so uh, it's great stuff. Uh, so let us get to our Leonardo's starting lineup. Uh, Leonardo's at Mill Hopper, a sponsor of the golf tournament. We appreciate uh, Kyle over there. And this is going to be the five stories. I can't wait to see what happens uh, as we go forward in this SEC college football season. Uh, I did a thing for uh, Gators Wire. It's, I think it's up now. Well, I know it's up now, but it's going up. I mean, it's up now, but it's also going to be up when you hear this. <laughs> Does that make any sense? about the, uh, the best non-conference games. And I, it, I was, as I was doing it, I really kind of got fired up for football season. And I went, come down there, boy. We got a ways to go. It's three and a half months until you get a game. So uh, it's going to be a while. But, um, yeah, I'm fired up for the, even the early part of the season. Um, so the number one story to me is what the league is going to do about schedule. Even though we all know what it should do, and it's going to happen at the end of the month. Uh, you would hope that they'll get this thing done. But it is – I've talked about this a million times. I've talked about it with different people, talked about it on the show with people. Um, but the bottom line is we know what they should do, but we know why people don't want it to happen. I, it's going to be interesting to see, see if there is any negotiation going forward. If there is any, well, hey, here's what we'll do. We'll do this and this and this. Or whether it's, hey, look, we'll, we'll set up these neutral site games so that you can make even more revenue. In the end, money will talk. Even though the, I know that these athletic directors want, and their coaches, want to be put in position. And let, let's call out the schools that we think it is. Kentucky. Kentucky still wants to play Louisville, but they don't want to play uh, 11 hard games. I mean, they don't want to play any, you know, they want to play nine, they want to play eight in Louisville and then have three easy ones. Um, Kentucky's won, Vanderbilt, of course, has won. I think Ole Miss and Mississippi State probably. I, I don't know where Arkansas is on this, but my guess is they don't want to do it. Uh, these are the teams that are fighting, Missouri, fighting against this because they want to get to six wins and go to a bowl. It's, it's good for revenue, it's good for a lot of things, good for the image of your program, and I get it. I understand why they're fighting it, but it, there'll be a compromise at some point. Hopefully, they'll get to nine, and I think it'll be fun, and I, I think it'll be a lot more interesting. Um, we'll see what happens. But that, to me, is something I'll be fascinated with uh, at the end of this month, especially if they walk out of that meeting and they go, we still don't know. We can't, we can't get anybody to agree on Because they're not going to walk out of there with a consensus. They've got to walk out of there and go, it was 14-0. And don't forget, Texas and Oklahoma will be there as non-voting members, but you know they're going to have a say. And I'm sure both those schools would want to go to nine games, I would think, and um, in, the, in the new league that they're joining. And Texas and Alabama never – they always get what they want, right? So you would think that would happen because Alabama's one that, I mean, Nick Saban's been pushing this for years. So we'll see what happens there. Uh, number two on the uh, Leonardo starting lineup is who will be in the SEC title game and is the SEC title game going to keep going? That's another thing we're going to find out in the coming months uh, because I think it will be. I think it's too much of a revenue generator. But when you go to nine games, 
but you do go to the 12 team playoff is there any chance that the SEC title game could be a problem because again this is where like I there's there's a lot of lip service when it talk when it comes to um, student athlete safety yeah we need to have more student athlete safety let's play a hundred games how about that hopefully none of them get hurt during that but you you have an opportunity to play 17 games if you get playing all the playoff games and everything not, not, two teams would have to do that in in theory but um and that's what you have to do in the NFL where you're not getting paid. But now you're getting paid, so maybe it's okay. I, I think there's going to be a lot of conversation about it, um, whether the conferences all say, look, we need to get away from these conference title games if we're going to a 12-team playoff. However, there's also this. Now, who's playing 12? Who's playing in the 12-team playoff? There's only 12 teams, and, and only four of them are gonna, could possibly play 17 games. There's a lot to discuss here, but I think it's certainly a factor. And then who is going to play in the game is going to be the big factor. And everybody's going to pen in Georgia. They're not going to pencil it in. They're going to pen it in that Georgia will be there. Tennessee's the only team that can knock them off, I think. Uh, and then LSU or Alabama, I don't think anybody else will be in the mix. I, I still don't think a and going to be there. I think A&M will be a little bit better. If I was going to pick um, – my order in the SEC East, it would go Georgia, Tennessee, probably. I don't know if South Carolina is going to be any good. I, I, that, it's, it, it's hard to get the taste of that butt kicking that Florida gave them in the swamp out of your mouth, even though after that they went and beat Tennessee and Clemson. Which you're like, what? How did that happen? So, I mean, any team that's that schizophrenic, it's hard for me to – jump on board with and you know what Kentucky you you think that with Devin Leary and and uh, Liam Cohen that Kentucky might be pretty good this year um, we'll see I can't wait for it I know that that's all I know for sure number three and we talked about this with uh, Chris Lowe on Monday the demise of uh, Alabama uh, a lot of people are ready to throw the dirt on them uh, they're not that bad. They're, they're, they're going to be fine. they got to get the quarterback situation figured out. Maybe it's Tyler Buckner. Uh, I, you know, but he, come on. That guy, that coach, the people he brings in to work for him, the, the culture they've laid, the players they're still getting every year. They were, the, were they not the number one class for recruiting last year? I think they were. So they're going to be fine. I think they're going to be good. There'll be some. Now, I will say this. That early game against Texas, which again thinks it's back. They, they, they still aren't back, but they think they're back again. That early game against Texas is going to be a huge in, in finding out what Alabama's got. If Alabama beat them last year 17-9, to 9, I think. Uh, it was a really close game. Maybe it was a one-point game. Uh, maybe that's another game. Oh, I'm thinking of A&M, Miami. Something like that. But anyway, it was a very close game in Austin. This one's in Tuscaloosa. They lose in Tuscaloosa to Texas. You're going to go, Texas is in the mix. Alabama's out of the mix. But it is going to be one thing that people are watching. And then if it goes, let's say it goes really south, like Alabama goes, dare I say it, nine and three. Oh, um, would that prompt the uh, idea that Nick Saban might, might be done? He might be want to, want to go, eh, I can't do it anymore. We'll see. That is going to be a huge story. Uh, number four, who will be the SEC Player of the Year? And if I was going to vote right now, my vote would be for Jaden Daniels at LSU. I think they're going to play well, and I think they're going to have a good team, and I think he is going to do really well. He's a, a great player, and um, I think he could put together the kind of numbers. Look, the bottom line is when it gets down to SEC Player of the Year, much like the Heisman, uh, you got to be winning. And, and so Carson Beck could end up being the SEC Player of the Year and not be any better than Stetson Bennett. I'm not blaming Stetson Bennett. He was a great quarterback for what they needed him to do. But it could be that Carson Beck does the exact same thing. Now he's got a different coordinator. We'll see how that goes. Uh, could be that um, maybe Spencer Rattler is finally Spencer Rattler for a whole season, not just here and there. Maybe, um, maybe Graham Mertz is just – this unbelievable player that we had no idea how good he was going to be. So I do think it's a little wide open as far as that goes. I mean, we could go through a lot of other players. Um, somebody in Alabama could certainly win it. 
Uh, but it's going to be uh, another thing that's going to be fascinating. Finally, on uh, number five on our Leonardo starting lineup here today on this special SEC edition, the storming the field question, which I, um, I, I, I talk about a lot on the radio because people call in. Some people are in favor of stiff penalties, some are not. Of course, the fines have done nothing. Nobody's stopping it. Uh, my, and look, I am totally prejudiced about this. And the reason I'm prejudiced is I – I've had a goalpost land near me. I've had people step on me to get over them, and I don't like it. Uh, I'm working, but nobody else is working. The other people, I, I get why you want to storm the field. My daughter stormed the court for Florida when they beat uh, Tennessee, I think it was, or Auburn. They beat Auburn. She stormed the court. I was, like, mad at her. She goes, what are you mad at me for? I go, well, you're not supposed to storm the court. It's not supposed to happen. Bottom line is we're going to get – I think we're going to get this resolved one way or another. And the, if they do want to take away home games, which I believe I talked about a year ago on this podcast, take away your home game next year, that will have – you know what they won't do? Store in the field. You know what they, why they won't be able to store in the field? They'll stop them from doing it the way they do at Florida. I mean, it's not hard. It's not even difficult to stop people from storming the field. If you decide, if you commit to it as a conference, you can get it stopped. You've got to come up with the right punishment that will make them go, well, we're going to have to hire people and get it done. We'll see what happens there. All right, that is our Leonardo's starting lineup. We appreciate Kyle Cohen and Leonardo's. We'll take a break. When we come back, we'll talk to Robbie Andrew for Yes, Nowhere, maybe get his thoughts on some of the things I talked about as well. Special SEC edition and special Bob Dooley Invitational Edition. Hello there, everybody. I'm Pat Dooley, of course, from another Dooley Noted podcast. And this is a great Adam Brewer, and he's just opened up a place here, Adam Brewer to go. Uh, what would give you the idea to do this, to have a to go place? Like this? Uh, we really like the fast concept, you know, being able to get the barbecue. Uh, now we have this new online ordering. So we before it was a call ahead carry out, quick service. Um, we have like a curbside kind of a deal where um, you know you're, you're, everything's ready to go for you. Um, and then we thought, wow, we have a really great dine-in concept, but uh, how can we make this you know, streamlined for the customer and make it easy and accessible uh, for all parts of town? Adam's Rib Code to go. Come on down and enjoy it. Great food, great atmosphere, a diverse menu, everything made from scratch, plenty of space, and locally owned. These are all the characteristics of a great restaurant. And you can find each and every one of them right here in Gainesville at Ballyhoo Grill. Ballyhoo Grill prepares all of their food fresh every day from their salad dressing to their award-winning soups. Bring your family and enjoy dinner under the Tim Trebo Tiki Hut while listening to live music. Or if you're running low on time to eat out, they also deliver through Uber Eats, Fight Squad, and Postmates, a Gainesville staple that's been open for over 30 years check out ballyhoo grill on facebook or at ballyhoogrill.com albert alberta i understand you were witnesses to a crash can you tell us about the accident when you're in a crash it's important to get witness statements immediately after the accident whether you're in a car, truck, motorcycle, scooter, or even a golf cart accident, at Melden Law, we won't back down. Another duly noted podcast comes to you from the Coach's Podcast Room at Spurrier's Good Iron Grill and Celebration Point. You can watch and listen to us on Facebook and YouTube for every podcast that we do on Mondays and Fridays at 2 o'clock. Listen to the podcast whenever on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Podcasts, Overcast any of the other 39 platforms where you can find this podcast or your favorite podcast. Remember to like, follow, and subscribe. If you have any questions or comments, leave them in the comments section below or call me if you want to do some advertising at 352-317-3444. As the oldest Gator Booster Club in the world, Gainesville Quarterback Club gives you access to elite speakers like coaches, NCAA football insiders, Gator greats, and more including yours truly. Share your passion for Gator football with hundreds of other members at weekly in-season meetings, home game tailgates, and special events throughout the year. Join the Gainesville Quarterback Club today. Trial membership until April 11th only, featuring Billy Napier and Tommy Townsend. Email the club 
at membership at quarterback club dot org. That's membership at quarterback club dot org or call me and I'll let you get to the right people. Things have certainly got a little out of hand lately when it comes to just buying our everyday necessities. Just look at gas, streaming services, and heck, even chicken wings. Well, there is one necessity that shouldn't cost a ton. Taking care of yourself and helping fix all the aches and pains in life, and the fine folks at Titan MRI agree. With costs a fraction of what you'd pay at a hospital, you'll not only save money, you'll be taken care of by staff with over 20 years experience. So when you need an MRI, call Titan first, and you can go where your doctors send their families. Now offering CAT scans. Okay, welcome back to another Duly Noted podcast presented by Titan MRI from the Meldon Law Gator Studios. Again, we're doing a pre-taped uh, SEC preview, and what better genius about SEC football to have on than the great Robbie Andrew joining us here. And we'll play a little yes, no way, or maybe with him in a minute. Robbie, I know you're fired up about the Bob Dooley Invitational Friday, so um, or today Absolutely. when we're showing yeah. this, but yeah. Yeah, absolutely, Pat. It's a uh, great tournament, a great cause. It's always a lot of fun. And it will yeah. be again this one. Yeah, you got – I, I need to talk to Jill about exactly what she's got going on out there. Okay. So. Well, she – the plan is I was I was going to drive her out to the 14 and help her set up and then come back and play in the tournament. Robbie, I'll have it set up for her. You and maybe we, somebody could help to come get me in a cart or something. Yeah, we're doing Something we're gonna, like that. Well, we'll work it out. I got a better plan than that. Okay. I got plans all over the place. Okay. Um, you demand the plan. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> I, uh, I, I, hey, you know, yesterday I was doing this thing for Gators Wire about the uh, the best non-conference games in the SEC this year, and man, yeah. I got I got so fired up wanting to wanting it to be September already, you know, and want, oh, want the season to start. Summers are. are hey, what, Remember yeah, when you were kids, game, you loved summer? Now you hate yeah. summer. You just want to get it over with. Yeah. But I remember as a kid, I was excited about the all-star baseball game, and now I don't even watch it. That's right. Is it, they still have it? <laughs> I guess, yeah. Well, yeah, exactly. All right, let's play. Uh, and, of course, Robbie comes to you on the Big Mills Cheesesteak Zoom line. We'll play Yes, Nowhere, Maybe with him, brought to you by Big Mills Cheesesteak. Street Dining done the right way, a big sponsor. And I know Robbie's going to have a sausage dog from Big Mills as he goes around the first tee. That's where that'll no be. No doubt. Um, yeah, you tend to gain – everybody tends to gain weight from this tournament. But uh, you, but you can only gain off. so much in one – you can only gain so much in one day, though, so just go ahead and have fun. True. And then you you'll, you can walk to the airport and back and be done. Yeah, you can walk, take care of it. You can walk to the airport like between holes. Yeah, <laughs> it's not that far. All right, here we go. Uh, yes, nowhere, maybe. Robbie, number one, there will be last place votes at SEC Media Days for the Florida Gators. I'm going to say yes, Pat. I mean, you look at all the early stuff now. They've got Florida barely ahead of Vanderbilt in the you know power rankings and the standings, and yeah, I think they're going to they're going to be people voting them last. And that's because of the way they finished last year and the fact that the national perception is that Florida's awful right now. Yeah, it's and that Billy Napier's on the hot seat. So, yeah, they're going to get a lot of – probably new, multiple last-place votes. I wonder if they've ever had a last-place vote, you know, in the history of no, the media. I don't think – not since I've covered out there, Pat, at media days. I don't think so. Not, nothing even close to that. That may be something I, I call Herb Vincent and find out if, if yeah. you can find that out because that would be interesting. Well, Pat, yeah, but, but look, think about it, Pat. In all the years we went out there, we're out there. Was Florida ever picked lower than like third or so in the division? No, I think there were some people that voted him fourth and one of, one of Mullen's years maybe. But no, I think they've always been – yeah, it's either yeah. who are you going to pick or Florida. And then if you at worst case, you'd pick Florida third. He's yeah, right. yeah, but yeah, but I now I mean, be... yeah, because Vanderbilt beat Florida last year, so people are going to say, "Hey, I'm I'm putting Florida behind Vanderbilt." I think the, the the final vote will end up Georgia, Tennessee, South Carolina will get a lot of love, and Kentucky. Uh, see, I I, I, wouldn't, put, yeah. I wouldn't put Missouri ahead of Florida. 
No, I wouldn't either. But I, those other four, though, I think you're right. Those are going to be the top four, Pat. Yeah. I think Florida ends up fifth. Uh, yeah. Not that it matters. No. Not, never matters. All right, number two on Yes, Nowhere, maybe, Robbie. This is the last year of divisions. We still don't know that it is, but it, it appears headed that way. But who knows if they stay at eight? Maybe they don't. I'm going to say that uh, a strong maybe on that path, leaning toward yes, that I think this may be the, the last year. But everybody knows where it's going, where it's going to be just one thing in the top two teams at the end of the year playing the you know, the title game. So, you know, it's going to happen sooner rather than later. And I, I think maybe this will be the last year of the East and the West. And from, you know, going forward, I think they're going to have no no divisions. There's, there's no doubt that's where they're going. There's, I mean, there is some – you know, it, it will be kind of a sad day because, you know, again, we didn't know about divisions till 92. But, yeah. um, but th that has been kind of a big part of our lives covering the Gators uh, was, were divisions. You always looked at divisions, who you play in the other division, you get a break not yeah. playing Alabama and stuff like that. So it'll be kind of different. There's no doubt about it. All yeah, right, it definitely will be. Finally, Robbie, on yes, nowhere, maybe Florida will have a first-team All-SEC player at the end of the year. At the end of the year? Oh, yeah. Definitely yes, Pat. There's there's enough talent on that roster, and I think they're going to be better than people think. So, yeah, I think they're going to be one, two, who knows, maybe three. But, yeah, there's going to be an All-SEC player on that roster at the end of the year. I don't think there's any doubt about that. Yeah, you know, a lot of times it depends on who else is – at your position in the SEC, yeah. you know, like you can't be first team All SEC if the Heisman Trophy winners first team All SEC. At yeah, quarter, yeah exactly. Know. But yeah. uh, it'll be interesting to see how it goes. But uh, yeah, I mean, it hasn't been there haven't been a lot of them lately. Uh, yeah, not too but many. But Pat, would it, shock, would it shock you if ETN rushed for a thousand yards and was All SEC at the end of this year? It would only surprise it me. Anyway. It would only surprise me because. Um, They'd like to share the load, and he's got four of them there now. Yeah, um, he's trying to add a fifth. Yeah, so I, I, that would be the only surprise reason I would be surprised. But don't forget, Kelvin Taylor, the last guy to do it, and I think that was with Matt Jones on that team, right? Um, I think it was too, Matt. So, I mean, it's possible. If you run the ball enough, you yeah. can get to 1,000. And depends on how many games you play. As yeah, well. and they will be running the ball, I'm pretty sure of that. They will. And I, I'm a big believer, Robbie, that this new rule is actually helping Florida where the clock doesn't stop on, um, you know, first down. First down, because yeah. I think Florida's going to try to shorten the games. I don't, I don't, I'm not saying it's going to be a lot of fun to watch, but they're going to try to find a, the, their best way to win games this year. Well, yeah, I, I agree with you, Pat. I think they want to, you know, burn the clock and run the ball and take care of the football and have – Put yourself in a position to win the game in the fourth quarter. I think that's going to be the way they go at it. I think you're right. All right, that's going to do it for Robbie. We appreciate you coming on. Man. Okay, Pat. Let we'll me know about you. tomorrow. We'll see you at the ball yard. Okay, see you, Pat. See you. Robbie Andrew joining us here on Yes, Nowhere, maybe. Uh, and that's going to do it for this segment. We will take a break. We'll come back. Hesser and Kipke, Ben Igreality, uh, Adams Rib, Leonardo's at Millhopper. Pat Dooley's story time from East Lake Pediatrics, this, that, and the other. All that is coming up here on a special edition SEC preview of on, of, in, the, uh, on another Dooley Noted podcast presented by Titan MRI from the Melvin Law Gator Studios. Hello there, everybody. I'm Pat Dooley, of course, from another Dooley Noted podcast. This is a great Adam Brewer, and he's just opened up a place here, Adam Brewer Co. To Go. Uh, what would give you the idea to do this, to have a To Go place? Like this? Uh, we really like the fast concept, you know, being able to get the barbecue. Uh, now we have this new online ordering. So we, before it was a call ahead carry out, quick service. Um, we have like a curbside kind of a deal where, um, you know, you're, you're, everything's ready to go for you. Um, and then we thought, Wow, we have a really great dine-in concept, but uh, how can we make this you know, streamlined for the customer and make it easy and accessible uh, for all parts of town? Adam's Rib Code to go. Come on down and enjoy it.
Great food, great atmosphere, a diverse menu, everything made from scratch, plenty of space, and locally owned. These are all the characteristics of a great restaurant. And you can find each and every one of them right here in Gainesville at Ballyhoo Grill. Ballyhoo Grill prepares all of their food fresh every day from their salad dressing to their award-winning soups. Bring your family and enjoy dinner under the Tim Trebo Tiki Hut while listening to live music. Or if you're running low on time to eat out, they also deliver through Uber Eats, Fight Squad, and Postmates. A Gainesville staple that's been open for over 30 years. Check out Ballyhoo Grill on Facebook or at BallyhooGrill.com. Albert, Alberta, I understand you were witnesses to a crash. Can you tell us about the accident? When you're in a crash, it's important to get witness statements immediately after the accident. Whether you're in a car, truck, motorcycle, scooter, or even a golf cart accident, at Melden Law, we won't back down. As the oldest Gator Booster Club in the world, Gainesville Quarterback Club gives you access to elite speakers like coaches, NCAA football insiders, Gator greats, and more, including yours truly. Share your passion for Gator football with hundreds of other members at weekly in-season meetings, home game tailgates, and special events throughout the year. Join the Gainesville Quarterback Club today. Trial membership until April 11th only, featuring Billy Napier and Tommy Townsend. Email the club at membership at quarterbackclub.org. That's membership at quarterbackclub.org. Or call me. And I'll let you get to the right people. Things have certainly got a little out of hand lately when it comes to just buying our everyday necessities. Just look at gas, streaming services, and heck, even chicken wings. Well, there is one necessity that shouldn't cost a ton. Taking care of yourself and helping fix all the aches and pains in life. And the fine folks at Titan MRI agree. With costs a fraction of what you'd pay at a hospital, you'll not only save money, you'll be taken care of by staff with over 20 years experience. So when you need an MRI, call Titan first, and you can go where your doctors send their families. Now offering CAT scans. Okay, welcome back to another Duly Noted Podcast Special SEC Edition brought to you by all of our great sponsors, and we appreciate them so much here on, uh, of course, brought to you by Titan MRI as well, uh, one of our main sponsors for the Bob Dooley, and by Meldon Law, another great sponsor from the Meldon Law Gator Studios. Um, we appreciate everybody. Uh, let's get to our, including Hesser and Kipke, let's get to our Hesser and Kipke Three things, Hester and Kipke is a Gainesville law firm specializing in the area of workers' compensation and family law. Ken and Jennifer take great pride in their one-to-one focus on each and every client they represent. Ken is George Bur- George board certified in workers' compensation law by the Florida Bar. While Jennifer, I think I was trying to get to Jennifer, that's why I said, so I said George, uh, possesses extensive jury trial experience. There's too many J's. With a nearly 20-year prosecution, background as a prosecutor. Don't believe me? Check out their more than 55 five-star Google reviews, or better yet, give them a call at 352-339-9920. I cannot wait to find out what they think of the the tournament Friday. Uh, All right, so our Hester and Kipke three things is usually the the kind of the national stories of the the day that are going on, but today, obviously, because we're doing this early uh, and taping it, I'm going to give you the three things I love about SEC football. I love these three things about SEC football. And number one is no two towns are alike, no two tailgates are alike. Even though, you know, every, except for Nashville, everybody's pretty much a college town, but like Starkville and Athens aren't the same. They are not the same. They're not, it's hard to believe they're in the same country. Uh, Baton Rouge is not the same as Lexington. I mean, they're, they're so different. Uh, Colum- the two Columbias are, couldn't be more different. Columbia, Missouri, and Columbia, South Carolina. But that's what one of the great things about it. Wherever you go, in all the years that I went to all these schools, everything was different. Every place was different, and every tailgate scenario was different. You know, Florida, it's spread out over a mile uh, circumference, I would say, uh, maybe more than that. You know, LSU, it's all kind of in one place, although they, they have other places, but the, the main focus is in one place. Um, you know, everywhere you go, Tennessee, there's people tailgating in a, in a parking garage. 
uh, which you don't see all the time. So it's it's just so cool. That's one thing I really love about it. Two, on uh, the Hester and Kipke three things that I like about SEC football is that feeling right before kickoff. They, I, I, look, I've been to a lot of games all over the country, NFL games, USFL games, other college games. Although I think almost always there was an SEC C team playing, but I've been to some of the college games. There's nothing like that. The moments in an SEC game with Auburn, LSU, or Florida, Tennessee, whatever it is, right before kickoff, when there's a buzz that goes through the crowd, that is different. It's different than everybody everywhere else, and it's not loud. It's just different, and it is such excitement with nervous energy combined. You pile those together, and it makes this weird buzz. And I think I almost heard that at the Derby on TV this week. Um, or last week, um, that kind of buzz. Like, like I said, it's not loud, but you can feel the energy coming off people. Uh, and then number three is in the SEC, it does mean more, which means it hurts more. And that is that to me is what makes it great, even though it hurts. Look, there was when Florida lost Alabama forty to thirty nine on a missed extra point back in nineteen ninety nine. It took me a couple of days. To get over, um, it it does when you when you lose a game in the SEC, unless you're not any good, which some teams aren't. But when you lose a big game or you lose a tough game and you lose a game where you're this this game, Florida South Carolina in 2010 is a great example, um, where Spurrier came in and won the East by beating Florida. And that was a hard one. I mean, it hurts more, and that it like it does mean more, but that mean means it hurts more. And that's one thing I like about the SEC is just how much pain people are in. And it's great for talk radio. I can take that much right now. Uh, Those are the three things I love about the SEC. And they're brought to you by our great friends at Hesser and Kipke. Let us move on to the Ben I. Odell Realty Games of the Weekend. And uh, Florida baseball, of course, big series with Vanderbilt. It could have been bigger. If they just won one of those last two games against Texas A&M, there would be a one-game difference between the two teams. Uh, but even without it, it's still a big game. Uh, Vanderbilt leads Florida by two games. The first game's a 5:30 game right, on the SEC network. So obviously the SEC's loading up the back end. They're going 5:30, I would guess, and then an 8:30 game or eight o'clock game, whatever. Uh, after that, uh, but 5:30 on Friday, uh, Florida will be playing at. Uh, against Vanderbilt at Condren Ballpark. It won't be the last time you see the Gators this weekend because they'll, they'll host a regional. Uh, but last regular season games at home. And then the 6.30 game on Saturday, and that's on the plus, And a one. Now, that will be the happiest I'll have been. The tournament will be done. I'll just sit back, maybe make myself have a nice cold beverage I would go with vodka cran, maybe the way I go. I, haven't, I don't think I've had a vodka cranberry in like six months. So you lose all this weight. Um, but um, And just watch the Gator game. And then 1 o'clock on the plus again, uh, Florida versus Vandy, which is kind of interesting that Florida Vandy is a pretty big series. But you would think, uh, you know, I've never understood the point of the SEC alternative channel. Um, there's a second channel. If you go to 68, you go to 69, just music playing and a logo up there. Well, why have the channel and then showing all that stuff on SEC Plus? Because you still got to have cameras and announcers there. But again, they're trying to sell the Plus. Hey, it's their business model. At least I can find the games. Um, softball, I won't, I can't tell you because as we told you Monday, which is really today, uh, Wednesday they play, and I don't know where they're going from there because I'm obviously we're, we're taping the show on Monday. Uh, hopefully they win a, win a game. Uh, I do know that uh, women's tennis is playing at North Carolina five o'clock on Friday. Uh, that is the Sweet 16 for women's tennis. Uh, it'll probably be on somewhere. Good luck. Maybe it's just on your phone on like the SE or the uh, Florida channel. But I just so you know, that's when it is. Uh, NBA, again, you got to wait and see what happens. Some of these series could be over and change up, so I can't really give you those. Lacrosse is playing at 4 o'clock on Sunday. 
in the uh, NCAA tournament. Uh, I'm sorry, on Saturday, on Friday. Get it right, Pat. Friday in the NCAA tournament, four o'clock. I know it won't be it won't be on TV, but they're playing Sunday again in the second round. I don't think either one of those will be on television, but those are the games of the weekend. Thanks to Ben Ig Odell Realty. Let's get to our Adams Ribco to go. Gator of the week. Our Gator of the week is simple this week. Our Gator of the week is Adam Brewer. Adam Brewer every year cooks up a mess, brings out his smoker, cooks up on this unbelievable food for our golf tournament, and we appreciate him so much. And he is a Gator, man. Believe me, he is Gator through and through. And we want to make him our Adams Brewer. He's already a member of the Bob Dooley Hall of Fame. Um, actually, Bill Reichert going in. This, and Bill Reichert and Mike Leach are inductees this, this year. Uh, but uh, Adam Brewer is already in the, the uh, Hall of Fame. And now he is – does he have to give himself an award? The Adams Group Code to Go Gator of the Week? I don't know. We appreciate Adam. Uh, another guy we appreciate, Kyle Cohen over at Leonardo's at – Quick picks, Leonardo's at Millhopper. Um, we'll, uh, we'll make it simple. Florida, Vanderbilt, Sunday. You, a lot of you picked Florida to beat Texas A&M, and I don't blame you, but it didn't work out, so you, a lot of you didn't qualify, but you got another chance to qualify. Florida, Vanderbilt, Sunday. Just pick a winner in that game. Um, it is time for us next to go to this, that, and the other. This, that, and the other brought to you by Ironwood, uh, golf course where we will having the tournament uh, by Ballyhoo Grill who will be out there with Fried Alligator and by Dar Shackow Insurance and uh, we appreciate all of our great sponsors all these great people for doing this uh, let's get to it the this because we're, we're keeping this SEC related so we'll talk about the Gators remember when Florida never won the SEC they never won it. They couldn't win it. They finally win it in 94 or 84. We're all excited. They'd strip it later in the year. I still want to know where that trophy is. I know that trophy is somewhere on the premises. They never gave it back. I want to know where it is. I want to find it. Like the Raiders of the Lost Ark thing. Maybe you have to take the little thing off and you have to put the weighted bag of sand on there. I don't know. But it's there somewhere. But that was it, man. We never won it. The that was then along came a guy named Steve Spurrier, and Florida won it all the time. All the time. Like, when they didn't win it, it was shocking. Think about it. They won it in 90, even though they wouldn't give it to them, which is ridiculous. And, and Steve has acknowledged that team many times. But they were the best team in the SEC. They won it in 91. They, won it, they went to the championship game in 92 and lost in the last seconds. They won it in 93, 94, 95, 96. 99, they got there and lost Alabama in 2000. They won it again. It was, it was, you knew you were going to Atlanta, early Birmingham, but Atlanta every year. And then came Urban. And Urban all of a sudden wins it. Two years, two out of three years. We're like, man, we just own this league. And that's unfortunately the other. Last time the Gators won it was 15 years ago. That's a long time, man for this program not to win a championship. Now, they played in it three times since then. McIlwain played in two. Did you, either one, anybody out there think Florida was going to win either one of those games against Alabama? How about no? I don't think so. And then, of course, uh, Mullen gets there and plays against Alabama, one of the great teams in college football, and plays them right to the last play of the game. All we needed was a Lindsey Scott play, right? And uh, so, they, I mean, they were competitive in the in, – in, Two of those games, not, not one of them. But it's a long time for this program to go without a championship, and that's why Gator fans get angry. And that's why they get so angry that they say mean things about things. So I do get it. I understand your – I understand Gator fans who get really angry. I, I do. But the bottom line is – you got to stay with it, man. You got to stay with it. You're going to still root for the laundry. So just keep it going. That is our this, that, and the other. And finally, uh, Pat Dooley story time brought to you by Eastlake Pediatrics. And let's, I'm going to just quickly tell you the origin of the Bob Dooley Invitational, um, why I started doing it. Uh, my dad had prostate cancer surgery way back. 
and I've had it too, and my brother's had some, and my, uh, you know, it's just in our family. My dad, my grandfather died of prostate cancer. Um, unfortunate for us, but he was in the hospital at the Mayo Clinic, and they left him under uh, anesthesia a little long, and so when he came out, um, he was physically ill and was in unbelievable pain. And he was white, and, you know, he, the blood hadn't come back in his face. And I just sit in his hospital room, and I said, you know what? I've been thinking how cool it would be to have a golf tournament. I'm going to have one for Dad. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to have a tournament and call it the Bob Dooley. Bob Dooley Invitation. 44 players. We gave away hats. I think that's all we gave away. We gave Stop Children's Cancer $300. That's all we made on it. I, and I think two of the next three tournaments, I lost money physically. I, I mean, they, I had to chase people down for, to pay, and they never, some of them never paid. I lost money. Now we are near 28. It's the biggest tournament in town. And we keep it going for Dad because we love him. We miss him every day. The Bob Dooley. It's cool. And Jared's going to find out about it. He's coming out there. And this is Jared's last performance, right, on the podcast. So uh, we will miss him terribly. Apparently I am the podcast producer killer. Uh, I, I keep knocking him off left and right. Hey, who knows? Maybe we should have gotten Bin Laden to produce the show, and we could have knocked him off in two, two months. That would have been easy. Uh, but anyway, we'll be back. Well, when we come back, we'll see. But we will be back. Until then, I am Pat Dooley saying I'm deep, I'm way back, and I am out of here.